It may be milk for some, it may be meat for others, but some people have a hard time understanding that churches are separate, they are independent. They are not, it's not universal, it is local, it's visible. We are having church tonight in Jacksonville, Florida, and if I can't see you, you're not in church. Mind you, there are some ladies in the mother-baby room. They're in church. They're here. They're with us. We're congregated together. We're assembled together. And that's exactly what church means. It means locally congregated, cong I mean, gathered together, congregation. It's an assembly of the saved. An assembly of the saved. In Hebrews 2, he says, In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto you. Well, that's quoting Psalm 22, In the midst of the congregation will I sing praise unto you. Unto thee, it says. So the, the Bible's clear. Church means congregation. And if people would just replace the word with assembly or congregation like the Bible does, they would have a better understanding. They wouldn't talk about the building. Well, nobody's at the church today. Well, then it's not church if nobody's there, right? That wouldn't even make sense, right? And look, and he makes, look at verse 22 in this chapter, Galatians 1, verse 22. And was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. Well, what is the church? It's those gathered together in Christ. It's those that are saved and gathered together. Listen, if you're here tonight and you're not saved, when God looks down, you're not part of the church. Yeah. You got to get saved, right? If you're saved, but you're not gathered with us tonight, and I don't care, you're watching live on the internet right now, you're not gathered with us, you're not with the church. Yeah. We're not gathered together. This is very important. Go to Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. And some would say, well, well why, why is a universal church doctrine so bad? I mean, the Catholics have that tradition. The Protestants have that tradition. But you know what? Independent, fundamental Baptist churches do not have that tradition for a reason. It is bad doctrine to have remote, remote authority. If we say, well, you know what? I think we need to put rugs down on the floor over here. But we can't make that decision on our own. But we have to phone it in across the country and see if we can get permission. That's no authority at all. What we've done is we've taken the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ, and His Word. We've taken the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you, and we say, well, it has no authority. We have to ask a man in another state. Look, we've, that is way off balance. That is wrong. You are not letting the Holy Spirit lead the group. You are not letting the congregation be a congregation. This is very important you know because I, I believe denominations or denominationalism i believe it is an anti-congregational movement why does the southern baptist lump together they own the buildings you want to change the sign you want to change the bible you want to change the music you want to change the preacher well you better ask the head of the southern baptist convention now look, that's wicked you put all this power in an infrastructure that you don't see anywhere in the bible Right? And what it is, it, it, it essentially creates a popery. Well, the Southern Baptists don't have a pope. Yeah, they do. They vote him in every year. Yeah. yeah, they do. They have a council. They have their board members, right? They have whatever they want to call them that makes decisions for the little local churches so the local church no longer can stand on scriptural authority. Yeah. They have to bow to an organization. Denominations are anti-congregation organizations. They take the power away from the local church and that's not right when one leader can make a decision you know what no more King James Bible as the default Bible well that's wicked as hell yeah. right or when one leader can say you know what Calvinists are saved <laughs> well like zombies everybody's gonna follow whatever the Pope says well the, the, the church said that Calvinists are saved so clearly they are listen that's dangerous that's not right and you know as Christians we have a local church and, you know, anything else is not right. You know, and today, you know, back in the day, I remember they used to call it, um, what they call it electronic church. Anybody ever hear that term? Electronic church? Okay, now they call it internet church. There literally is a movement called the internet church. And you have these little satellites that will get together, and they don't have a pastor, but they watch some pastor on the internet, right? Or the same fear, and we've seen it, you know, with the, the new IFB sometimes acts like the new internet fundamental back. Well, well, we're independent. No, you're not. Not if you're watching and waning for somebody on the internet to give you instructions and directions. You've lost your independence. Yeah. And this is very important. It's very important to maintain church independency. We've got to gather together. 
Gathering together is part of church. We're here to provoke one another unto love and to good works. If you're not gathering together, you have no accountability. I know of people that would sit and watch the internet. They would watch their internet preacher and drink or smoke weed while they're watching their internet. Oh, yeah, you get them. Oh, he touched my sin. I'll wait a minute and then drink again. All right, there's no accountability. And look, if, if you're not gathered, there's no growth. And I think that's the danger. The internet movement creates this facade. Well, I can download doctrine. Yeah, but you're not changing your lifestyle. You don't have a soul winning partner. You don't have a brother or sister in Christ that you're walking with and laboring with and you know, caring about and praying for. All those things is what makes a church. We have to gather together to be part of the church. Accountability is necessary for growth. When somebody preaches against your sin, the Holy Spirit sure, you know, whoa, he's talking about me. I better not look up. They'll know he's, you know, look. But when you're sitting at home in the dark doing whatever you want, you don't have that. Yeah. So it is very important to gather together. You're in Acts chapter 14. Look at verse number 26. 14, 26. And thence sailed to Antioch, from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. And when they were come, they had gathered the church together. They rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. Go to Hebrews 12. Gathered the church together. This same phrase is used in 1 Corinthians 11. It says, For first of all, when ye come together in the church. 1 Corinthians 14, it says, If there the whole church be come together into one place. What is the church? It's when the believers come together. When the believers come, if I can't see you, you're not in the church. If you're not saved, you're not in the church. This is very important. And this is where you get into church satellites are not biblical at all. They're very dangerous. Hey, church planting is very biblical. Amen. But not a remotely led group. You know, okay, we have campuses all over the city. Well, who's in charge of these campuses? Well, it's different every week. Seventh-day Adventists are known for this. The big First Baptist Church here in town is known for that. Right, we're going to start these campuses, right? The 1122 Church here in town, same thing. They have multiple campuses. Well, who's in charge? One man. If he's not there, how can he be in charge? Right? It's a shepherd that doesn't know the sheep. I think they call that a hireling when he's a stranger, yeah. right? So shepherdless flocks or campuses following remote leadership is not a church. It's not a church. However, 